shall we begin? Let the games begin. All right, all right, all right. A new age has begun. An age of freedom. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Get to the chopper! This is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian Renteria. This is the podcast where we usually talk about all of the big movie news items coming out this week, along with the trailers and the movies that are out in theaters and streaming for your viewing pleasures. This week's podcast is going to be a little different. Uh, I will not be talking about the movies coming out. I will be talking, though, about the movies that are coming out in theaters and streaming this weekend, just to keep some, you know, normally, some normalcy into what the podcast is. But for the most part, as you can see from the title of this podcast, this is a special Q&A podcast. Uh, this is kind of my way of kind of making up for there not being, you know, a lot of podcasts the last um, few weeks. Uh, although I did do a podcast last week, so if you haven't listened to that yet, go ahead and listen to it. But uh, this is kind of my way of, of giving back. And I, I did a Q&A like the first year or two when uh, I first started the podcast. And, you know, obviously the podcast has grew a little bit. Uh, to say the least, in that time. So uh, this is kind of my way of just, um, you know, giving back and letting you guys get to know me just a little bit more. So I have some fun questions that came through the pipeline uh, with some of these. So, But before we get to all those questions, uh, let's talk about the movies that are coming out in theaters and streaming this holiday weekend. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Streaming-wise, we have uh, only two movies, at least that I, I was able to, to pinpoint. Uh, the first one is The Beatles Get Back. That's a documentary that's going to be up on Disney+. Plus. Um, that's it's done by Peter Jackson. It's a collection of videos and interviews and stuff from um, unprecedented access from The Beatles, when they were recording uh, one of their albums. I forgot to put down which album it was. But um, this one's been in the works a little bit for a while. I think it was supposed to come out earlier this year. I think maybe even last year. But then the pandemic hit and obviously, you know, took a that took a nosedive. But uh, that that's out there. Uh, that's going to be coming out on Disney Plus this weekend. Um, I, I think early reviews are saying it's really good uh, from what I remember. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the other streaming movie this uh, holiday weekend is Bruised. This is the Halle Berry directed movie, her first uh, feature directorial debut uh, here. She plays an MMA fighter, a down in her luck MMA fighter who wants to make a comeback. She also has a son that she, uh, I guess, gave up and then comes back into her life. So yeah, that, that's that's kind of what the story is, and it's kind of like a redemption story, a comeback story of sorts. Uh, reviews have been pretty mixed, for at least from what I've been seeing. Uh, I haven't really seen a review that's. Um, that's given the movie, you know, high praise, but, uh, you know, Halle Berry, you know, this is supposedly a, a passion, a passion project of hers. And, um, you know, if she can, you know, this is a, a gateway for her to get more in, into directing then you know, Hey, have at it. You know, she's been in the, in the industry long enough. I, I can only imagine that she wanted to direct for a while and this is the first project she chose. And obviously she has a connection to it. So can't really blame her for that. All right, so those are your streaming movies. Let's talk about the movies that are coming out in theaters. There is a limited release, uh, select cities, probably like L.A. and New York, probably, really. When you when you see kind of select cities and limited releases, it's usually L.A. and New York. But uh, the new Paul Thomas Anderson movie came, uh, will be coming out this weekend, and again, in a limited release. It's Licorice Pizza. Um, it will be getting a wider release at the end of the year, uh, Christmas time, December 24th. So... Uh, you know, if you didn't get a see in theaters now, you will be seeing it later. Uh, this is, of course, a coming of age story. It's Paul Thomas Anderson. It's back, he's back in the, in the valley in California where he, you know, directed a lot of movies and I think also where he grew up as well. So, um, it's a coming of age story. It's with Philip Seymour Hoffman's son, the late Philip Seymour Hoffman's son. Um, looks pretty great. It looks like another, you know, good, Paul Thomas Anderson movie, so you know what what's not to like about that. So again, that's getting a limited release. It will get a wide release at the end of the year. 
Your other big releases this week, though, we have House of Gucci, which, of course, is the story of, uh, you know, the assassination of of Gucci. Um, I forgot his first name, uh, but uh, he's played by Adam Driver in the movie. Of course, Lady Gaga plays the wife who the trailers kind of give it away. I, I, you know, I, I was very coy about giving information away about House of Gucci in case people didn't know. But the trailers could pretty much give it away that um, Lady Gaga's character, the wife who marries into the family, she's the one that kind of set up a plot to kill uh, to kill her husband. Uh, it's pretty much take over, you know, the fortune and the, and the family name and stuff like that. So there's a bunch of other people in there. Of course, you know, Jared Leto. Everyone's talking about Jared Leto in his, in his fat suit. But Al Pacino's in there. Uh, you got a bunch of other people. Jeremy Irons is in there. Salma Hayek's in there. A uh, bunch of other people. In that. But th- there you go. House of Gucci. Of course, directed by Ridley Scott as well. Uh, the next one is uh, Disney and Pixar's Encanto, which I think is Pixar. I think it's Pixar. Uh, I didn't write that down, but... I'm assuming it's Pixar. Uh, Encanto. Uh, this is, of course, um, follows a, uh, a young a young girl who is the only member of her family who doesn't have special abilities. But then, when the family's abilities and powers start to fade, she's the only one that can save them. Uh, so this looks pretty cool. Uh, the second trailer really won me over on this one. Um, this is also getting a release on Disney Plus later this year. So we don't can't watch it in theaters or don't want to watch it in theaters you want to watch it in the comfort of your own home uh you can wait till um i believe it's coming out on christmas day 25th december 25th but uh, i'll take a another quick look at that but yeah there you go you have Encanto, uh and then finally you have resident evil welcome to rancoon city i've kind of slowly been anticipating this one for a little bit um i really like the cat i know there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of reactions to it I remember when the first trailer came out. Uh, I didn't like the song choice. I thought the song choice was a little weird. Uh, there's also a monster in there that looks very, very CG heavy and like it, it, it looks bad. But, uh, so I'm assuming they probably shot this on a very, uh, on a relatively low budget. But I like the cast. The cast in general, I mean, if the cast, if this cast was in any other movie, I thought, I think it'd be, I think it would also work. I just really like the cast. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people have a lot of reactions to it. A lot of people are, you know, saying stuff about it, but, uh, I've been kind of slowly looking forward to this, mainly because of the cast, really. I mean, that's really the only thing that's really getting me really on board for the, for, for the movie. And, you know, the movie itself looks, it looks okay. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, but, uh, I, I just, um, hoping that it's good. <laughs> Open decent. Decent at the very least. Decent at the very least. That's all I want. Okay, uh, so that's that's it. That, those are your movies coming out in theaters and streaming. Resident Evil, Rac- Welcome to Raccoon City, Encanto, Hasaguchi, and the limited release of Licorice Pizza. And on streaming, you have the Beatles Get Back documentary on Disney+, and Bruised on Netflix. Let's get to your questions. All right, so like I mentioned, I got a good handful of questions, um, some pretty good questions too, so I'm really looking forward to um, to answering these. I got one question, which I, I'm, it's probably a joke question, but I'm going to answer it anyway because you know, it was asked. Uh, what is love? And uh, I've heard it's um, if a baby doesn't hurt you no more. That's, that's what I've heard. <laughs> Uh, if you get that reference, that's really cool. But, uh, I don't know. I'll let you know when I find out myself. Oh my God. Uh, a lot of self deprecating in these questions, I bet. Uh, but there you go. That's, let's get to the real, (laughs) that was the real first question. Let's get to the next question. Uh, the question, another big question. Another question I got, which is very, very good. Where did my love for movies come from? Uh, which is a very, very good question. A very open question. (laughs) Uh, but the quick, easy answer would be my brother, uh, one of my brothers, anyway. Uh, he's one, he's the one that mostly, that I mostly go to the movies with and the one that always kind of took me to the movies when I was younger. Uh, the longer answer besides my brother, which is of course also involved in this longer answer is honestly being left to my own devices as a kid. And that's not to say that I was neglected as a kid, but those summers as a kid, when I was, you know, when I wasn't, uh, hanging out with my friends or, you know, playing with my toys, cause we all did it. Don't say you didn't play with my toys or playing video games. Um, I was watching movies on my v- on my VCR. Um, I'm old enough to know what a VCR is and have used it for a very long time uh, and v- what VHSs are. So I was watching, you know, the, the Disney anime classics like Lion King and Snow White and Sleeping Beauty and Beauty and the Beast uh, to then other movies like Terminator 2 and Demolition Man and Bad Boys and Mortal Kombat and uh, Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. I used to love that movie, too. Uh, and you know, whatever, you know, whatever else we had lying around the house, we had a lot of movies lying around the house, VHSs. And then when DVDs came along, we had a lot of DVDs that, uh, were around. So I was always watching movies when I was a kid. And when my brother started taking me to the movies, 
And as I got older, you know, and as I, you know, we got the internet and, you know, I, we got a, you know, a communal computer. I found, you know, online news sites and outlets like uh, back in the day, like Ain't It Cool News or IGN Movies. And then eventually, you know, I found like, you know, the top outlets like Deadline and The Hollywood Reporter and Variety and other places. And, you know, the world just kind of opened up from there. You know, it wasn't just actors that I started to recognize from things. And it wasn't like, oh, I, you know, I've seen that actor before. I've seen her before. I've seen him before. And, you know, this other thing. I started to recognize them and I started to recognize who they were and I started to recognize directors and learn what directors did and who they were and, and what they did beforehand and stuff like that. And then I learned what a producer actually did. And I started reading, again, the outlets and stuff like that and what was coming up production wise, you know, reading the movie news, you know, and stuff like that. So and it all kind of, you know, went downhill or uphill, depending on how you want to look at it uh, from there. And um so yeah, my love for movies came from from that, and of course the escapism of it all. I really liked, you know, just disappearing for an hour or you know an hour and a half, two hours, you know, whatever, however long the movie was. Uh, that was always fun. But um, yeah, that's that's where my love for movies came from, and you know, obviously as I got older, I started you know learning a lot more stuff as well, and you know what how you know what went into making a movie, and you know how long a movie gets, you know how long a movie is made for, and stuff like that, and editing and sound and mixing and all that other good stuff so my love for movies just really came from from that and then as i got older just you know learning more about the whole filmmaking process and that's just kind of how i fell in love with it uh the next question subs or dubs uh which i'm assuming you're i'm hoping you're talking about subtitles <laughs> in movies um i've always been a subtitle guy honestly i don't mind reading when i watch a movie and honestly practice makes perfect and uh, you know i was one of those people i was like I, you know a subtitle comes up and like ah but as I got older, it was like, no, I mean, I, I don't mind reading, you know, I don't mind watching a subtitle movie. When a, sub, when a movie subtitle, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever, that's fine. I'll do it. Um, I also really can't stab, stand dubbed movies. Unless it's like an animated stuff. Like, if it's animated, it's like, okay, like, yeah, you know, it's always, you know, like like the um, Miyazaki movies. You know, obviously they do, you know, the English dubs. And those are fine because it's an animated movie. So I guess that kind of gets away with it. But I still, you know, also want to watch you know, the original version with the subtitles, I'm just fine. Because, you know, you lose some, you know, you lose a little bit of, you know, the subtleties and stuff like that when you watch a, a dubbed movie like that. But um, I can't really stand the dubbed stuff. It, it just, it, because the dialogue will be out of sync and their mouths are moving or are not moving anymore and they're still talking. And sometimes, you know, whoever they get to dub the person, just, you know, that voice does not match the body. Uh, and, and always it, it, it has, and it will always bother me, which is why I don't like watching stuff that's dubbed. So I'm, I'm a subtitle guy. I like reading subtitles. I'm fine with subtitles. Next question. This is a fun one. Obviously kind of very timely. What is my favorite Christmas movie? Uh, I think the easy answer would be like elf, or if you want to see the, the argument start die hard. <laughs> um, honestly, I think those would be my two answers probably, especially elf because, I like Elf, okay? It's fun. It's dumb fun sometimes, but it's fun. And, you know, it's always on, you know, during the holiday season. And, um, you know, it's it's fun to watch, you know, something like that. Uh, I also really like Krampus. <laughs> Just because it's, it's a multitude of things. It's a horror movie, borderline dark comedy. It's a Christmas movie. It's a family drama. It's got a great cast. It's got awesome practical effects. Um... I know it's really weird, but I, I like that. I guess I never really thought about what my favorite Christmas movie is or was. Um, the, you know, uh, there are movies that I watch on Christmas or around Christmas that aren't Christmas movies, like Storks. I don't know why, but I, I've caught myself watching Storks around every Christmas time since it's come out, and because I just really like Storks. I think Storks is I think Storks is great. If you haven't watched Storks, the animated movie, highly recommend it. It's very very good. I also always end up watching Love Actually. I, look, I like Love Actually. Okay, it's fun. It, and I know it's fun to hate on the movie. I know a lot of people have come to like hate the movie because of how problematic it is. And yeah, it's problematic. <laughs> you know, it, it, you can't get around that. But you know, for for what it is, I, I like the movie. I still like it. it. It's just it's one of those movies I, I do end up end up always watching. And I always watch the theater version. I never watch the one on TV because they always cut stuff out. Like they like they completely cut. Like I forgot for many years that Martin Freeman was in Love Actually. But if you only watch the TV version, you don't know that Martin Freeman's in there because his storyline is like he's playing a um, a, a porn star's a porn star's double, 
and or stand in, not double, a stand in for whatever reason. I mean, I can, I know why uh, they they cut that out, but it's always weird. Like some versions also have him in like that last scene in the play at the very end because he's like, I think it's like related to someone or he's like, you know, on a date with someone over there um with one of like the main characters so he shows up like you can probably see him in the crowd and you're like is that martin freeman like is, is he just an extra no he's actually in the movie uh but the tv versions always cut his, his part out because obviously because of the material and stuff like that but and probably honestly if you're going to cut anything from the movie that's probably the thing that really you can really cut out because it doesn't really relate to anything else in the movie um it's kind of like the thing like if you have to choose something to cut out that would be the the part i i think that would be the card if i had to cut out something that would be the part that i would cut out as well uh but yeah christmas movie, i mean I guess, I guess i'd say elf uh just because i do end up kind of putting it on in the background sometimes especially when like i'm wrapping gifts uh or putting gifts in, in bags and stuff like that and i just i want something holiday i'll just put elf on because it's it's easy just to you know have it on the background and laugh every time something funny happens so yeah okay people tomorrow morning 10 a.m santa's coming to town santa! Oh my God! Santa here? I know him. I know him. All right. Next question. Uh, what is my favorite? What has been my favorite movie of the year so far? I got this one pretty late, so uh, I use I do keep a list of the movies that I watch throughout the year. Uh, and like I mentioned, I got this one late, and I don't have my list in front of me. Uh, but off the top of my head, uh, definitely one of the movies that I've enjoyed uh, this year has been uh, Nobody which came out very early in the year, which I, uh, which I really like. Uh, of course that was the, um, Paul, uh, Bob, I almost called him Paul, uh, Bob Odenkirk movie. I really liked it. Uh, I did. I, I watched it in theaters. It was one of the first movies that, we, that I watched in like in a, in a private screening, which was a lot of fun. And, um, and, and like private screening as in like, we rented out the, the auditorium because you know, that's the thing that we, you can do now with the pandemic. Um, at least in my area, I don't know if you know you guys can also rent out private theaters but um nobody yeah for sure nobody was one of my favorite movies uh that i enjoyed this year it's probably it definitely won't be going on my list uh man i, I don't have the list in front of me i can't remember now what i've watched this year and that's kind of sad if i can't remember off the top of my head but nobody comes to mind i, I you know I, I know it has problems i know not everyone like i, I like the mortal Kombat. I, I did like it there was that Judas and the Black Messiah. Judas and the Black Messiah came out earlier this year too. That was one of the early ones, and I kind of, I kind of enjoyed that as well. Yeah, man. There's, I don't have the list in front of me. That's kind of, and there's, I, nothing pops in. I don't know if it's just because I'm recording this early in the morning or what, but I just can't think of anything. So, I'll obviously do a, um, a end of the year list at the end of the year, like I always do. So, so this question is a, uh, we'll, we'll round back to this question. <laughs> all right, let's answer these next uh, couple questions. Uh, I think these all three come from the same. Yeah, I haven't said who ask me those other questions i apologize for that um these next questions come from uh, one of my favorite podcasts the three films in a pod podcast but they asked me a fun question here uh favorite type of pizza listen any pizza is good pizza except papa john's <laughs> i had papa john's once uh all like years ago like easily 15 years ago probably yes that that long i had it once and it was in new york and it, the only reason we had Papa John's was because it was very close to the hotel. It was like literally down the street and it was late. We were hungry we were like, we didn't want to go anywhere. So we just wanted to go back to the hotel room. So we picked up Papa John's and we had it and it was terrible. And it, it is since that day, we promised we would never go back to Papa John's. There's also no Papa John's around me, but, uh, if you gave me a choice and be like, you can have this, this or Papa John's. And I'd be like, well, it's not going to be Papa John's pizza. Uh, so I apologize to anyone who works at Papa John's or really likes Papa John's. I just don't like Papa John's. Uh, anyway, uh, I mean it. Good pizza is pizza. Frozen pizza. Stu- I mean, I'm from Chicago, so we have stuffed pizza. We have deep dish pizza. Um, I love all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> I love both of them. Uh, stuffed crust pizza is really good too. Um, you know, with the cheese inside the crust. Uh, Little Caesars has cheese and pepperoni in the crust, which is really good. Uh, we've been eating that a lot lately. So what you did accomplish with this question is just make me hungry and want pizza now. And that's a very bad thing because uh, I'm recording this at work and there's no pizza places around me. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm going to have the urge it's for pizza all day. I guess I know what my dinner is today. It's going to be pizza. Uh, but I'm also a simple man when it comes to like toppings and stuff like cheese, extra cheese, pepperoni, sausage. I'm solid. Every now and then green peppers on there. But for the most part, pepperoni. Pepperoni is probably my go to, honestly, to be to be completely honest. OK, uh, next question. They're also very good questions. Some of my favorite movies of all time. Um, 
uh, they ask for like a top five or a top 10 or anything like that. I don't think I've ever actually discussed this. So uh, on the podcast, I think I've brought it up like maybe in other podcasts that I've done or videos and stuff like that or very quickly in passing. Uh, but I've never mentioned um, any of this. And um, so, yeah, this would be a good time to obviously do it. Um, I have quite a few that stand out that are some of my favorites. Um, I always kind of when anyone asks me what my favorite movie is, my default answer uh, has kind of always been The Wizard of Oz. And I really like The Wizard of Oz. I kind of like the whole idea of it because it's like The Wizard of Oz is like the ultimate escapism movie. It's a movie about escapism for the most. Right? I mean, if you want to look at it that way. Um, so I kind of always say The Wizard of Oz. And it's one of those movies that I haven't watched all the way through a lot. Like I've probably seen it all the way through maybe maybe five times because I like watched it once for like a, for a film class and we watched it all the way through. Uh, and then I, like on my own, I've probably seen it like maybe twice, maybe three times. I and mean, then like another time, it's probably, I could think it's kind of like just been on in the background. I've caught myself like just watching the majority of it. So it's it's a movie that I that I like, but it's not a movie that I, like I go back and watch all the time. Like it's just it's a movie that I pop in every now and then. Where like you know what I need just something on in the background to like decompress. And in Wizard of Oz is kind of always that movie. So um, yeah, I always kind of say Wizard of Oz, and I don't think it's a bad choice, right? Uh, but yeah, Wizard of Oz, uh, The Dark Knight's also one of my favorites. Obviously, you know Christopher Nolan's Batman movie is you know The Dark Knight is it's the quintessential comic book movie. It's also the quintessential movie that you can argue if it wasn't a comic book movie or wasn't related to the comic book movies was it still a good movie. Uh, probably. Yeah, I, I'd probably say that. I, I'd probably say that. Uh, I like early Michael Bay. And when I say early Michael Bay, I'm talking about Bad Boys, The Rock, and Armageddon. Those are three of my favorite, probably 90, 90s movies. Uh, and my favorite movies of his. If I had to pick one out of all those three, I'd probably pick The Rock. Because I've, I've seen that movie so many times. I watched, That was also one of the movies I watched when I was you know left to my own devices. I love The Rock. I think The Rock's awesome. Um... If you ask me what my favorite movie, if someone else like, okay, like, what's your favorite movie besides Wizard of Oz? I would probably say The Rock, to be completely honest with you guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, The Rock, Bad Boys, Armageddon, obviously, that's, you know, that's quintessential Michael Bay, early Michael Bay, 90s Michael Bay. And that's the Michael Bay that I really like. I don't like the whole flashy, you know, everything's got to be CGI now, Michael Bay. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, that, that's, there you go. Uh, the A-Team, the A-Team movie that they did with Bradley Cooper, Liam Neeson, uh, Rampage Jackson, and, and uh, Charlotte Copley. Patrick Wilson's also in there. Jessica Biel's also in there. I really like the A-Team. I know when it came out, everyone was like, oh, this is over the top. This is campy. This isn't the real A-Team. The real A-Team was a show in the 80s. No, 80s? 70s? I, I forget. It was an old show. <laughs> before my time. I just say before my time. I don't want to knock anybody who was alive when they, were, <laughs> and they watched that when they were a kid. Um, but I've seen episodes of the A-Team. You know, as a kid, and, and even now, it's not a precious commodity. You, you, you like, I don't know why people like all of a sudden were like we're all high up, high up and mighty, and high brow on the A team. I like Joel Carnahan's The A Team. I think it's really good. I think it's funny. I, the action in it is really great. Is it over the top? Yeah, but I, I think it fits with with the, the story they were trying to tell and and uh, kind of what uh, I guess a little bit of what the A Team originally was. So I really like the A Team. I, I I will always end up watching it. Um, because I just really like that movie. Uh, Dodgeball is another one. That's one of probably uh, one of my favorite comedies up there. Uh, it's Dodgeball. I mean, I quote it all the time, too. So animated movie-wise, uh, Mulan. I really like Mulan. I, I mentioned Storks earlier, uh, so I'll, say, I'll put that back in here. Uh, Mulan, I like Mulan. Beauty and the Beast is another one. I think that's probably probably right, ne- right up next to Lion King as my favorite uh, OG Disney animated movie. And then uh, Wreck-It Ralph. I really like Record Ralph too. Uh, Record Ralph was, at least you know, in these modern times. That sounds so pretentious. Uh, <laughs> at least in these um, modern times, uh, Record Ralph is, is is one of my favorite anime. It's one of the only real animated movies that I've watched multiple times in theaters. Because usually when I watch animated movies, I kind of only watch it once in theaters, and then I kind of just leave it alone. But Record Ralph. I'll leave it alone until, you know, it comes out on home and then I'll watch it again. But Record Ralph specifically was a movie that I watched in theaters and then went to go watch it again. Because that's how, that's how good I thought it was. Um, I think the only other anime movie I've done that with, which is also, I'll also put on this list, uh, Teen Titans Go to the Movies. I watched the original Teen Titans show, you know, kind of a darker, you know, edgier kind of one. And I would never watched the new one, the more colorful one, the more, you know, kid 
more obviously younger kid centric show um and my brother and i were like let's go watch it let's see how it is and whatever and we watched it and we loved it (laughs) i really like teen titans go to the movies i have watched that movie multiple times that was another one that i watched multiple times in theaters we watched that in theaters i think twice yeah we watched it in theaters twice and yeah i just i just really like that movie i don't know why i just really like that movie it's it's funny it's funny it's meta it's it's a good time if you want to go watch teen titans go to the movies you don't even have to watch the show to really like the the movie it's just it's really good all right uh i got a few other ones on here i have like again i just i just really like movies guys uh star trek the 2009 version i really like that one i wasn't really expecting much from it i think like a, a lot of other people i know a lot of people don't really like it that much but uh i really enjoyed the 2009 star trek movie um so you know say what you want but i really liked it um john carpenter's the thing and halloween are always two of my favorite john carpenter movies along with uh, big trouble little china although i haven't watched big trouble little china a lot i've only seen it a couple times all the way through um i guess i'll just put it on the list too big trouble little china halloween and thing um the thing obviously you know just it that's probably one of my favorite yeah the thing and halloween probably my two favorite halloween movies definitely in the top five for sure i don't know what their order is but definitely in the top five with that uh and then big trouble little china you know you got kurt russell in there you know just hamming it up and being cheesy and yeah i gotta put my boy guillermo del toro in here somewhere because i do love his movies and i do love his imagination so i've got blade 2 which is probably my favorite blade movie um i watch blade 2 a lot as well (laughs) all the time uh and then uh pan's labyrinth is another one pan's labyrinth really pan's labyrinth really um got my creative juices flowing again um because i I was always kind of like a creative kid and then uh you know i kind of hit a a a little block creative wise and i just didn't want to do anything and then i saw pan's lambert and that kind of just opened me up to all the possibilities that can happen again so i really owe that movie a lot to my creative side uh and gamble del toro for for that as well uh two more uh black dynamite i love black dynamite i think it's great michael jolly white i met michael jolly white at a film festival once and he was really cool and really awesome and he gave me a head nod like the day after i met him i don't know if he recognized me or if he was just being nice but he gave me a head nod so i will always you know say that i got a head nod from michael jolly white uh and uh black dynamite's really great it's a, it's an exploitation movie it's a parody of an exploitation movie it's really good if you haven't watched it i highly recommend it uh it's got it's it's funny it's got some pretty decent action in it go watch it uh, and then uh, Tron Legacy will be the last one I put on, on here on this list. Um, I really like Tron Legacy. The first Tron, not so much. <laughs> uh, but Tron Legacy is really good. Uh, you know, the soundtrack is great. The the visuals are, are really great, too. It's a dad story, too. The dad stories always get me. But, uh, but yeah, Tron Legacy. All right, moving on. Uh, this is the last question that I got for this Q&A podcast. Uh, obviously, if you guys want to keep sending me questions, I'll, I'll answer them every now and then as well. But, um my last question for you guys, or that I have, and for you guys to to listen to, is a good one. I think it was a it's, a, it's a it's an appropriate one to end this Q and A podcast with. What are my goals and dreams for the future of the pod? Um, the <laughs> the self deprecating answer is finding a co-host. Oh no, bitch! Uh, I hate myself for saying that. Uh, finding a co-host would be nice. Um, you know, definite. Uh, you know, a stable one. Self deprecating. Uh, but anyway, the <laughs> the other answers for the future and goals and dreams of the podcast uh is that i definitely want to do more video stuff on youtube uh on my page which is what i used to do way back in the day i used to make youtube videos don't look them up because they're not good Uh, (laughs) they're they're just fairly simple it's crappy webcam and and me basically doing what i'm doing now which is um you know giving uh updates on the news and my opinions but um please don't look those up they're not good Uh, (laughs) um Uh, but that's what I used to do way back in the day. So, uh, and then I had to stop because of, uh, of college and stuff and, uh, obviously put, you know, my education ahead of my, you know, hobby, but I definitely want to go back and do some more YouTube stuff. I've been, I've been trying to do that for the last, uh, couple years, actually. I've been wanting to do that, but I just, I finally have all the equipment that I need. Um, I just need time to like, you know, I have space that I can use. I just need time to like, you know, get into it because obviously video editing and audio editing, two very different things. Uh, so uh i just need to find the time and stuff like that but uh if i ever if i ever do go back to doing video stuff on youtube it's probably gonna be like 
mostly reviews and opinions maybe maybe even kind of an extended take on on the podcast itself or something from the podcast and extending it up on there so that's probably what the videos will do but um kind of a little bit ways away on that i do want to definitely start that probably next year even if it's just like me in my car or with my phone and telling you my opinion on a movie that came out i think that's probably where i'll start and then you know we'll gradually go from there uh of course i do also as any good podcaster wants they want the podcast to grow and i want my podcast to grow uh i know it took me like four years to get social media accounts like an instagram and a twitter for the podcast (laughs) and i've been doing the podcast for five years almost six years now in february uh, and those accounts have, have grown and, you know, finding other podcasts and interacting with them and wanting to interact with a lot more of them along the way. It's been really cool and I hope it, it continues. Um, you know, uh, the podcast is, you know, kind of slowly getting out there and people are finding it and, you know, whether they're just following the page or, you know, actually listen to the podcast, either one, you know, it's, it's great just, just to have the exposure out there, the clicks as the kids say. Um, so maybe even getting some podcasters on my podcast would be great, whether if it's like a weekly roundup of news or reviews or just, you know, doing anything else would be kind of cool. Obviously, I had to ask people for that, and I'm, I'm kind of always sheepish on that. So, but I'm, I'm I'm totally, you know, game for growing the podcast out more. I mean, obviously, I want the podcast to grow. I've been doing this for five years. I wouldn't be doing this for five years, almost six years, if I, you know, wasn't um, passionate about it, didn't want to do it and stuff like that. You know, I've been open about, you know, kind of quitting the podcast, you know, every now and then. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I'm i not really showing any signs of slowing down because I want to keep doing it. So we'll, we'll see. And obviously just do a better job at the podcast, you know, consistent uploads and keeping you guys updated and stuff like that. And, you know, making sure the podcast comes out early enough where, you know, it can come out in the morning and you guys can listen throughout, you know, throughout the day or the weekend or whatever like that. But, yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for. I have also thought about reconstructing the podcast a little bit. Uh, although that would be in the case if I can't keep up the way the structure is now, which honestly is pretty easy. I just collect the big news and trailers and, you know, see what movies are coming out this weekend and, and give me my opinion on them. But I have been thinking about kind of doing a reconstruction of it. There's something brewing in my head that I would love to do. And I think if, you know, the podcast went through like a rebrand and or, you know, not a rebrand, but like a reconstruction, like a reboot, a soft reboot, if you will, um, I, I think that's probably what I what i end up doing or maybe it'll just be like another feature i don't want to start another pod i don't want to be a two podcast guy because if i'm a two podcast guy that means i need to have a lot of listeners <laughs> i don't think i do um but i love the listeners that i do have i love all you guys uh, really i do truly i do that sounds kind of that that sounded disingenuous it's not i really do love you guys but yeah i have, I have this thing in my head i think of you know my other thing that i have that would definitely i would definitely want to do that with someone else uh, I, I don't want to do that by myself, but if I do end up doing it by myself, just to like, you know, people can see kind of what I'm thinking about, um, then people want to come on. I I'd totally be game for that. But uh, as of right now, I think, um, I, I think I'm, you know, I, I think I'm okay with the podcast the way it is now. I think I might test out that thing that I've been brewing next year when the podcast comes back in January, cause I will be taking a break, you know, Christmas time. But, uh, but yeah, that's what I got planned. I got something brewing in my head, guys. I got something brewing in my head. And that's it. Those are all the questions I got. Uh, like I mentioned, some really good questions, a good handful of questions. I really enjoyed all the questions you guys sent in. Thank you for everyone who sent in a question. Um, you guys are awesome. Really appreciate you guys or gals. I know one of the people that sent me a question was was a girl. Um, but um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. And like I mentioned, this is a podcast to make up for the fact that I haven't done a podcast in the last few weeks. And I apologize for that. But thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. no matter where you're listening, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, on Spotify, or on YouTube, I really much appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, all of you have a very safe and fun and filling Thanksgiving. Hopefully, you're with your family or your loved ones, or if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, and you know, just hope that you're not by yourself. Hopefully, you're with someone, or even if it's a Friendsgiving, you know. Hopefully, you guys are are safe and happy, and you know, filled uh, with all the food that you're gonna eat. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. If you go Black Friday shopping, like out to the stores, please, please be careful. You know, there's always stories about craziness on Black Friday. So just please be careful with that. Uh, But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. Very much appreciate it. Appreciate all of you. Uh, Thank you. And um, thank you for listening. Honestly, not just this podcast, but all the other podcasts. Uh, It's been it's been a lot of fun 
doing this podcast and getting these questions have been a lot of fun. So hopefully you get to know me a little bit more. Like I mentioned, if you want to keep sending in your questions, you know, like maybe I'll do a Q&A section on the podcast every now and then. So yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, be safe. Have a good weekend. Have a good holiday weekend. I'll probably be releasing this really early in the week. So this will be the only podcast this week. Apologies if you're expecting anything. Uh, obviously, I'll keep you guys updated on the Twitter account with all the movie news and stuff like that. But for the most part, this is pretty much the podcast for the week. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. And as always, go watch some movies. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Give it up. Movies. <laughs>